Jacksonville, Florida is one of the smallest markets in the NFL. This city, now having the Jaguars for almost 30 years, has long struggled to be a host city for the NFL. Their existence in the first place, and their continued struggle for existence, has been due to a combination of many factors. This is why the Jacksonville Jaguars struggle to exist. To understand why the Jacksonville Jaguars struggle to exist, you must understand why they exist in the first place. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, expanding the NFL to 30 teams would continually be a topic of discussion. Finally, by 1993, with a new collective bargaining agreement for the league, the NFL was ready for two more teams, and there were five choices to choose from. Baltimore, Jacksonville, St. Louis, Charlotte, and Memphis. On the surface, Jacksonville looked like it was the least likely of the five, given that it was the least populated market of the five at the time. Charlotte would win the first of the two expansion franchises being given, in what would become the Carolina Panthers. It made sense, given that Charlotte was a growing area and the team could represent two states. But then there was the issue of the second expansion franchise. Wayne Weaver, who was behind Jacksonville's bid for an NFL team, was able to get funding for a new stadium essentially, nearly completely replacing the existing Gator Bowl. Impressive advanced pre-sales for tickets, and the strength of Weaver and his associates' presentation to the NFL and its owners, when compared to the other city's presentations, would ultimately reward Jacksonville with the prize of an NFL franchise. Over the next two years, the team would be set up to play for the 1995 season. And while the franchise's inaugural year would only result in four wins, the generous advantages given to the 1995 expansion teams would make them competitive quickly, particularly in the form of having two picks in every round of the draft in 1995, while also having additional lower round picks in 1996. Success would be had for the next four seasons, all of which would result in playoff berths, and two of which would result in conference championship appearances. The winning and the shine of a new team and stadium would wear off though into the early 2000s, and by 2005, signs showing that Jacksonville might not be a viable NFL city began to show, as it would be in this year that the Tarps would begin their long stay at Jacksonville Stadium. Though the Jaguars are considered a small market team, their stadium was originally built to a capacity that would suggest otherwise. At around 73,000, it was one of the largest in the NFL, as when built, the city was caught between a rock and a hard place. While the primary goal was to reconstruct it for an NFL franchise, the Florida-Georgia game would require a capacity of at least 80,000 seats to accommodate it, if Jacksonville wanted to keep hosting, while also the Super Bowl demanded at least 70,000 seats. And thus, Jacksonville would oblige, while also building the stadium in a way that temporary seating could be added to expand the capacity even more. This would be done despite the fact that even cities that regularly host the Super Bowl only do so every several years, and the fact that the Florida-Georgia game only happens once a year. At the time, however, the NFL had a blackout policy, and if not enough tickets were sold, the game wasn't shown locally on television. So thus, the tarps would be added, mostly in the upper deck, but some in the lower bowl even, and capacity would be taken down by 10,000. To make things worse, beginning in 2008, the team would begin a long, nine-year stretch of mostly losing, going 42 and 102 from 2008 to 2016, and season tickets would drop over 40% after the 2008 season, expediting an already obvious problem. The solution to this? Basically selling a home game every season to London, England, as they have given up a home game there every season except 2020 since 2013. Some things would begin to improve though, stadium renovations finally being able to reduce the capacity enough where the tarps would no longer be needed. In addition, blackouts would end league-wide in 2015. Despite this, and the fact that the team's prospects on the field seem to be improving, Jacksonville is still a constant topic of discussion over relocation. But why is that exactly? The team is in a fast-growing state. The city has grown. Well, frankly, when you look into the data, it's not quite that hard to figure out. For one, Jacksonville is one of the most misleading large cities in America. It is technically the 11th largest city in the country, but that is only because it is one of the largest cities in the country by land area. In reality, there are only two NFL markets that are smaller than Jacksonville. 
if we're considering Milwaukee as part of Green Bay's market, and those would be Buffalo and New Orleans, and its combined statistical area of population is 35th in the U.S., smaller than several non-NFL cities in this category. The city is also in a state of many transplants from other states, and it's surrounded on several sides by marshlands that people do not live in, limiting the growth and presence of an extended population base. Also, by the time the Jaguars came to Jacksonville, there were already two well-established franchises within Florida, whereas New Orleans, Green Bay, and technically even Buffalo have no other NFL teams within the states they reside. To put it simply, Jacksonville had the best offer on the table outside of Charlotte, but not the best market on the table. But in the end, their pitch won out. Which leads us to today. Today, Jacksonville's stadium is aging. And while the city got a longer than standard 35 year lease on the stadium, it is coming closer to ending. And it appears push may come to shove with this small market, as the team wants to spend $2 billion to renovate the existing stadium, while at least asking for half of that money to come from the public. Given the size of the market and the amount of money being requested, it is going to be a very difficult challenge to come to any sort of agreement, as the tax base just really isn't there, unless significant money comes from the state. Not to mention there's questions over how much interest there is in the team in the first place. And it remains to be seen where this long struggling franchise will go from here. Thank you for watching.